In this video, we're going to focus on how we can put in text in the segments. As you can see here, we're just grabbing the labels. And if I refresh, you will see it will, they will move nicely along with the segment of the pie or the polar area. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how to add the text in the segment of the polar area chart. First thing what we need to do here is of course get our boiler template, which you can find here on chartgs3.com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, copy and paste this code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon page here. And of course, I have a Discord channel, join as well. All of the links are in the description box. So what we're going to do here is create first a polar area chart. So I'm going to scroll down and look for here the bar. Let's say this will be the polar area. Let's save that, refresh, there we are. But of course we should not have any X scale and Y scale. So I'm going to remove these, save, there we are. So what I want to do now is put in here the text that would explain what this represents. In this case, it would represent the days. So let's start to look how we can put them in here. So to do this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say a comma, I'm going to make a custom plugin for this, say plugins, and we can say here segment text or arc text. It could be one of these pie segments or polar area segments. I'll just give it arc text. Now I'm going to say a constant this, and then I say ID will be equal to the arc text. And then we can say here, when would we like to draw this? In this case, I want to make sure that the text will be on top of the slice. So I'm going to say here, after the slice or after the data sets has been drawn, then I will draw, of course, our text. Say, and then here, plugin options, there we are. So now we have these here, we have the objects in here. The next thing what I want to do is, of course, an object destructuring, but this one will be a very basic one because I only need the CTX to draw in here. If you don't understand what I'm talking about here, please check out my video in the link in the description box about understanding the chart JS yes, object destructuring. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, let's start to look at the logic here. We have access to these lines here, so we can calculate the slice size. And what I want is eventually in the very center, here having the text in the direction how the slice is. So it should be here like a, not sure if it's horizontal, it's diagonal in a certain angle. And here we have all of these different ones. So let's start to work with all of that. So the first thing what we need to do here is to understand we're working with angles. So I'm going to say a constant angle equals math.pi divided by 180. And the reason why is we're going to start to work with rotation here. Since we're working with rotation, 360, but one pi equals a half circle. So one pi is 180 degrees and I want the single degree. So that's very important. The next thing what I need to know is I need to know this center point here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate this center point to zero. So don't worry, it's not so com complicated, but we can get the center point immediately by doing the following. I'm going to say a console log, and this is a built-in chart yes, functionality. We say here chart dot get data sets, or sorry, data set meta index zero, and then we can say here data, you can also say here index zero and then x. By doing this, if I refresh, I get here now the exact coordinate of the center and that is 350. So what I can do as well for the y value is just say here y. And then you will see here, this will be 366 in this case. So these numbers are very important later on. So let's say here constant x or x center, whatever you want to call it. But I'll just say here constant y and x, and we'll say that will be equal to these numbers. So once I did this, I need to do here now a ctx.save. I want to save these items. And then what I want to do is, I guess we can grab this and just let me show you what more is in here. Because I was talking about the angle of the slice. We have this information already stored in here. So let me just show you. So if I save refresh, we get the arc element and the arc element is basically the slice arc or the segment of the slice. So they call that in charge as an arc. So what we need to know is a few things here. You can see here X and Y, they're always consistent as since this is the center, how it calculates. However, it has a starting angle 
and then it calculates this in radians. And then we have an end angle, it will calculate this in radians or somehow, somewhere in the math pi. 2 pi equals a full circle. So somewhere there, it probably calculates it. Don't ask me exactly how, I have not dived deep into it, but not important. What I do need to know is, whatever this value is, can I convert it into a degree that it will be here? And then we need to have the ending, the degree here, so we can figure out what is the center here. So let's start to work with some of the basics. Now we have this saving here, and I guess that one, well, we can already grab that one here. So what I'm going to do now is just very simple. Say constant, and I'm going to say here the starting angle. And the starting angle will be equal to this dot start angle. Then what I want to do is another one for the end angle. And you can imagine already what we're going to do here. I'm going to say end angle. And then here as well, end angle. Save that. So now we have these. But let's start to work with the translation. Because the translation is very, very important. And so far I have not shown it. So what I'm going to do here is understanding why we have this. Because what I want to do is I want to make this the center. So our rotation is like that. Right now the center or the position 0, 0 is this corner here. And let me just show you. So we're going to draw a text here. So I'll say here is the text. And then I'm going to say here uh, ctx dot font style. Let's put that in there already. I'm going to say here 12 pixels and then sans serif as font family. And maybe we can make this bold. Up to you, of course, but you can do it like that. Then we can say ctx.fill style for the color. What is the color? I'll just make this gray. And then finally, ctx. Uh, we're going to say here fill text to put in the text, and the text will have whatever the text is. I'll just make this text as a string value. And then we're going to say here the x and y coordinates. But the x and y coordinates here is not based on uh, this here, the 350 and the 360. I want to make that the center. Because if I do here right now, let me just show you, 0, 0, save that, refresh, you can see the text will go here. What I want to do is I want that to start here because then rotation will be very easy. Or else I'll do rotation and it will rotate from this corner here. I don't want that. So to solve this issue, we're going to use translate in here. So what I can do here, you can just do it here below. I'm going to say ctx.translate. And I'm going to say basically translate would mean from now on, this specific coordinate will be the center or will be the zero value. For x, I will make it x here because this is the 350 and this was 360 or 366. So I'm going to say x and y. And if I do this now, this becomes the zero point. It will recognize now we have it in the center. And of course, because we have rotation or translate in here with many actions, I need to do something as well. I say ctx.restore to undo afterwards. Save that. Refresh. There we are. And as you can see here now, it is exactly in the center. This is very easy because now I can rotate within this specific center. All right. So now we have the most complicated part covered. Let's start to work on putting it in. So what I want to do now is two things. I need to know here, this angle here needs to be understood. And let me just show you with the rotation. Uh, oh, well, we can just start to calculate. We can do it like this. I'll just say here, ctx as rotate. Let's do that first. And in the rotate, I'm going to put in here a value. So let's say here, I'm going to say 90 degrees multiplied by the angle we have calculated here. Save that. Refresh. And as you can see here, this is 90, etc., etc. So what I need to do now is get this starting, uh, sorry, not that one, the starting angle here, whatever that is, convert it into a degree, and then I can put it in here. Because if I would put it like this, this will not work. You can see here, it. I'm not sure even if it calculates anything, it does something, but let's see with the end angle, we can confirm that as well. We have a different value. Not really. So we have to do something here. The value is probably too small to, to be noticeable. Like a run degree or 0 0.5 degree that doesn't change at all. So what I want to do now is uh, let's start to calculate this by doing basically that. Uh, by dividing it by the angle here and this one I'll divide by angle here. 
because this here was a minus 0 0.6 or something like that so I just have to convert it from math.py divided by 180 so if I do this now you can see here now it starts to work and it works exactly on the end and if I do here start you'll see as well the same logic but then specifically for the start and of course the start is the beginning so it doesn't move at all so what I want to do now is I want to calculate the difference between the start angle and the end angle so how do I do this well we're going to say a constant and let's say here center angle because we want to have the center of that segment or the angle and that is basically the start angle plus end angle and then we divide it by 2 but because we are dividing it division gets priority so we have to first prioritize the sum value if I copy this put it in there save refresh there we are so now you might say well how do I get it more up how do I control that well remember here we have the y value and we can just say here 100 and then it will go up 100 uh, oh sorry of course not in here it needs to go into the x value why because if I go back here to my angle here rotation if I save if I remove that you can see this is it and then we can rotate so we need to have the x value that is important so let's do that here go back there we are now it looks nice so how can you control if you want to have exact center from this point to here well remember this item here the console over the chart dot get data set meta data if I open this here we can find here the outer radius and the outer radius is basically the radius in pixels from this point all the way to the center calculated from this point as a zero it's already built in in chart.js so I could say here 326 divide by 2 uh, let's go here divide by 2 and then we should be in the center so you might say is it really in the center well we can do text alignment center and then we so push it a bit more in the center but that's basically it so we have this here we could say to make it very professional let's get one of these I'm just going to grab this then I'm going to say here outer radius copy this just put it like that so you get the outer radius and remember the outer radius is oh of course for this one it's like that and then here we have all these different ones so we have to calculate it later on I'm going to use a for each loop for that so if I save this right now there we are all right that looks quite nice let's do it to make sure I'm going to say ctx that text align let's put it in the center there we are all right so the final thing now is how do we loop through this making sure that every one of those are nicely in the center so to do this I'm going to make here we have this save this is very important we need to make sure we have the save in the for each loop and the restore as well if you don't do this you will get a spinning chart so we want to avoid that so I'm going to say here I'm going to grab all of this because that's basically all the data specifically all seven datas then I say here for each so we just loop through this then I'm going to say here for every data point in there get the index function error expression there we are then what I will do is cut all of this put that neatly between there all right then of course it will be quite easy we can just say here now this will be the index number here here this one should be maintained because this data set zero we only have one data set here and I have the outer radius so if I save this refresh oh all right we're getting some information for each is not a function and that is correct so what's going on here the data if we have for each we must get the full array I must I'm right now just only selecting the first array so I'm going to remove that so now we get the full array there we are so now we get this and interestingly enough our outer radius is not changing so what I want to do here is just to look what is our outer radius here or what am I missing so what I'm going to do here console log I just want to just get the outer radius or the data only let's save that refresh all right we open up these then we get the outer radius the outer is 326 all right are they consistently 326 
outer radius here is 217 that's interesting so then I have somewhere a formula fixed uh, let's see here index data dot index outer radius let's cross check this just to be sure all right so then what I need to do here is my bad I had this hard coded so that was the real issue here apparently everything else was fine so I'm going to put that in there save refresh and there we are so now we have them here and you can control this so let's put in just in case let's remove all of this the data that I want I want to grab here the labels so what I'm going to say here I can use here comma and just use here data and then because this object destructuring I can just say here this hard-coded text will be data dot data sets index zero dot uh, oh sorry not even like that I'll just get the labels so I can say here labels and the labels is an array so I can say here index so if I save that refresh there we are and that looks absolutely phenomenal look at that beautiful and that's basically how you can play around with these values